The new space race has begun, this time with commercial space corporations from the United States and China striving to become the world's leading players in the aerospace sector. However, while these aerospace businesses may be gazing up at the sky, they're not necessarily looking down at the ground. Since new technologies are benefiting everyday life on Earth and growing public interest in aircraft technology. Despite the fact that there is a strategic rivalry for both sides, the growth of privately held space enterprises will eventually be beneficial to everyone. In today's episode, we will discuss how commercial space corporations of China and US could play a crucial role in space supremacy for both competitors. If you like our content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get going. Let's talk about some basics for the subscribers who are new. China's commercial space industry has tremendous potential. There are currently over 160 commercial space companies in China, compared to over 5,000 in the US, and approximately US $1.3 billion has been invested into Chinese commercial space companies as of 2021. Furthermore, the Chinese government's space budget is around $6 billion US, making it the second largest in the world. The massive financial commitment is proof that many sponsors are confident in the future of China's commercial space industry. The future for commercial space industries in both nations appears promising, from the creation of new satellite deployments systems to the possibility of a person landing on Mars, the new era of space technology seems to have limitless potential. Rather than examining the new space race as yet another sphere of geopolitical rivalry, spectators should also consider the ways that both nations benefit from this increase in space innovation and exploration. Like their American counterparts, Chinese commercial space businesses are newcomers. The Chinese Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, for example, dominated aerospace innovation in China for decades CASC. Private space businesses needed money to compete with state-backed rivals. In 2014, the State Council issued Document 60, guiding opinions on innovating investment and financing mechanisms in key areas and encouraging social investment, which helped commercial space firms. A series of legislative reforms followed, allowing commercial space businesses access to government launch sites and other resources for research and development. As a result, more Chinese entrepreneurs felt confident in building global space enterprises. For decades, the CASC has led the country in aeronautical innovation. The organization's historical achievements vary from broadcast satellite dominance to lunar orbiter construction, one of which helped China become the second nation to plant a flag on the moon. CASC has even deployed high-resolution weather satellites. Scientists in China can use this data to better predict natural catastrophes and respond faster to people. CASC has long held the Chinese aerospace sector, but the rise of commercial space enterprises may deliver the next wave of innovation. This reflects the Chinese government's interest in commercial space. Beijing is fully aware of American commercial space enterprises' prominence and global aerospace sector domination. To avoid slipping behind its strategic opponent, the Chinese government is dedicated to assisting privately held space enterprises in their efforts to collaborate with foreign clients. Many corporations interested in satellite deployment but without a sophisticated space program subcontract the work to foreign aerospace companies. Beijing is concerned that certain clients may be unwilling to work with an agency linked to the ruling Chinese Communist Party, so nurturing private commercial aircraft enterprises might help attract more overseas clients. The most significant Chinese commercial space businesses might have an impact impact on global aerospace. Many of these startups were launched less than six years ago and have made great development in that period. For example, iSpace is currently developing reusable first-stage rockets to enable vertical landing of spacecraft, taking inspiration from SpaceX. Galactic Energy is creating rockets that can launch large constellations rather than just a single satellite. SpaceD has built a satellite that can rebuild 3D landscapes from radar photos. However, they look to be on course to close the deficit in the future decade. In the 1980s, the U.S. commercial space industry emerged following a series of regulatory reforms. The Commercial Space Launch Act of 1984 granted private companies access to government resources traditionally reserved for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA. The availability of these ancillaries should have led to the development of multiple commercial space enterprises, but this didn't happen. Even with the specialized equipment, the expenses of establishing a commercial aviation company were too high. 
Aside from that, no one wanted to compete with NASA's space shuttle program. During that time period, the space shuttle was the fastest way to deliver supplies to space stations and satellites. Due to high operating costs and competition with NASA, many Americans were reluctant to create commercial space enterprises. Commercial space enterprises have benefited from a decade-long aerospace renaissance. NASA's space shuttle program, which used to intimidate competitors, ended in 2011. After the program ended, a flurry of privately held space companies moved in to fill the void. These companies were owned by wealthy businessmen like Elon Musk and Sir Richard Branson, demonstrating that they had financial wherewithal to meet the massive costs connected with entering and succeeding in the market. After the elimination of these two barriers, more Americans felt secure in creating and investing in privately controlled space firms. It wasn't long before commercial space firms in the U.S. began attracting media interest. For the first time in 2012, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft reached the International Space Station. Nine years later, Virgin Galactic's rocket plane launched a group of employees 50 miles into the air, high enough to experience microgravity. Blue Origin has spent the last decade developing reusable rockets and suborbital spacecraft. The world is now watching these companies for their next groundbreaking discoveries. Even individuals who aren't interested in space travel are following commercial space enterprises. NASA and Virgin Galactic may encourage more young Americans to pursue STEM jobs. Around 53% of U.S. jobs demand STEM skills, but only 43% of the people have them. The U.S. labor market may stagnate unless more young people are STEM skilled. As a result, the U.S. government is trying hard to attract young people to scientific and technology jobs. Private space ventures may inspire more young Americans to pursue STEM jobs. They have enchanted both investors and employees. Former SpaceX employees expressed gratitude for the chance to work with intellectuals and produce potentially revolutionary technologies. This kind of inspiration may entice more Americans to work in space. China's latest increased interest in space has been impacted by the emergence of commercial space firms. A 2019 survey of Chinese children aged 8 to 12 revealed that 56% aspired to be astronauts when they grew up. In contrast, a majority of children in the U.S. wanted to be YouTubers and influencers. The Shenzhou 12 crew video contacting pupils from the Tianhe space station has garnered millions of views on Weibo. China's industries have benefited from new space travel choices. SpaceX founder Elon Musk is adored in China, inspiring many Chinese academics and business people to develop their own aerospace technology. Some Chinese companies have even copied SpaceX's designs. Although they may one day compete, many Chinese commercial space enterprises admire and aspire to mimic their American counterparts. Prince William recently questioned the present space race, arguing that elite scientists should focus on problems on Earth rather than exploring elsewhere. Assertion, airplane technology can help Earth's life. NASA satellite data helps track climate change and devise measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Beidou navigation satellite technology helps cities decrease traffic, crime, and improve response time for emergency rescue teams. The aerospace industry is not in the clouds, but staring toward the stars, humans immediately benefit from commercial space technology. SpaceX is collaborating with Starlink to deploy satellites that will boost subscriber bandwidth. Starlink targets remote areas with poor internet connectivity. The satellites will increase internet experiences by 20 megabits per second upload and 100 megabits per second download. Similar approaches are being developed by Galactic Energy, although the process is still in development. LinkSpace is developing high-speed delivery rockets. SpaceD plans to build and launch customer satellites in six months. Private space companies are developing technology for everyday usage as well as spaceflight. Both countries' commercial space industries look to have a bright future ahead of them, from the development of new satellite deployment technologies to the possibility of a human landing on Mars, the new era of space technology appears to have virtually endless promise. Rather than seeing the new space race as another domain of geopolitical conflict, observers should analyze the ways in which both countries stand to gain from the increased level of space innovation and exploration in recent years. Well, that's it for today. If you like our content, Content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.